The U.S. Department of Justice found more classified documents in a new search of President Joe Biden's home in Wilmington, Delaware, on Friday. A lawyer for Biden disclosed the fact in a statement on Saturday night, saying six items were found, including documents with classification markings. Some were dated from Biden's time as a senator, which lasted from 1973 to 2009. Others were from his tenure as vice president in the Obama administration. In a search that lasted more than 12 hours, Department of Justice investigators also collected some notes that Biden had handwritten as vice president, according to the lawyer Bob Bauer. He said the president had offered the authorities, quote, access to his home to allow DOJ to conduct a search of the entire premises for potential vice presidential records and potential classified material. It was coordinated with Biden's lawyers ahead of time, Bauer said, with his personal and White House attorneys present for the operation. The president and first lady were not present during the search. The document saga began in November when Biden's lawyers found classified documents in a Washington, D.C. private office used by Biden after his vice presidency. In December, others were uncovered in Biden's home. The two discoveries were separately made public this month. According to the White House, all of those materials were uncovered by Biden's lawyers. Based on information released publicly, Friday's search was the first time federal law enforcement have conducted a search for government documents at Biden's private addresses. A man suspected of killing 10 people near Los Angeles on Saturday during Lunar New Year celebrations has killed himself after being approached by police. The man's body was found on Sunday in a van in Torrance, California, just a short drive from Monterey Park, where Saturday's shooting took place at a ballroom dance hall. Los Angeles County Sheriff Robert Luna. The white van entered a shopping center parking lot. When officers exited their patrol vehicle to contact the occupant, they heard one gunshot coming from within the van. The suspect has been identified as who, as who can Tran. He is a 72-year-old male Asian. Earlier, the Sheriff's Department released images of Tran apparently taken from surveillance camera footage. Luna confirmed that he was involved in a second incident at a dance venue in the neighboring city of Alhambra. Witnesses said Tran walked in holding a gun that patrons were able to grab. No one was shot and Tran fled. He was disarmed uh, by two community members who I consider to be heroes because they saved lives. Investigators do not yet know the motive of Saturday's attack, though gun violence is frequent in the United States. The celebration in Monterey Park, home to one of the largest Asian American communities in the U.S., was part of a weekend of Lunar New Year festivities that drew thousands to the city. As of Sunday night, seven people were still being treated in hospital from the attack, with at least one person in a critical condition. Local residents spoke of the shock they felt as dozens gathered to pray for the victims. This is a community where my kids took art lessons. Um, we come down here for food all the time. Uh, we see elders walking around all the time. This has been a safe neighborhood for them to walk around and have community, historic Taiwanese Chinese community. So to see this happen in uh, this place is shattering. The White House flag was lowered to honor the victims. In a written statement, President Joe Biden condemned the killings and said he had directed his Homeland Security advisor to mobilize federal support to local authorities. Abortion rights across the U.S. are under threat, according to Vice President Kamala Harris. She took aim at Republicans on Sunday as she spoke in Florida to mark the 50th anniversary of the now overturned Roe v. Wade decision. Republicans in Congress are now calling for a nationwide abortion ban. Some even from the moment of conception. The right of every woman in every state in this country to make decisions about her own body is on the line. And I've said it before and I will say it again, how dare they? How dare they? The White House says as many as 60 anti-abortion bills have been filed in the 2023 legislative session so far. In Florida itself, the state last year passed an abortion ban without exceptions for rape and incest. 
Harris said a majority of Americans opposed the anti-abortion measures. Democrats and some Republicans cite concerns about the loss of abortion rights for Republicans' weaker-than-expected performance in last year's midterm elections. From Kansas to California, Michigan, Montana, Kentucky, and Vermont, they spoke with their vote. In essence, they said, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree that the government should not be telling people what to do with their own bodies. Harris's comments came as thousands of people across the U.S. held rallies and events to mark the Roe v. Wade ruling, which since 1973 conferred women the constitutional right to abortion, until the U.S. Supreme Court overturned it in June last year. In Wisconsin, protesters filled the halls of the state capitol building, calling to overturn the state's abortion ban. Voters in the state will head to the polls next month for the primary election for the Wisconsin Supreme Court and elect a new Supreme Court justice in April. The state's top court has a 4-3 conservative majority, but if a pro-choice candidate wins the seat, the state's abortion ban could be overturned. We need to have the numbers. We need to have the numbers so that we get the Supreme Court so we don't have to go back the 174 years that the laws are taking us back. It was incredible what we could do to prevent that red wave from happening. And if we can just keep that momentum and keep going, voting is where it's going to make a difference. Abortion is also expected to be a key issue in the 2024 elections. In a possible breakthrough for Kyiv, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock said on Sunday her government would not stand in the way if Poland wants to send its German-made Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine. Ukraine has been asking Western allies for the German-made tanks for months, but Berlin has so far held back from sending them or allowing other NATO countries to do so. Baerbock's statement comes after Poland signaled that it could send the tank without Germany's approval. Her remarks appeared to go further than German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's comments at a news conference in Paris earlier that day. Scholz said that Germany will not slacken support to Ukraine and will continue to act as long as necessary, but that all decisions on weapons deliveries will be made in coordination with allies, particularly the United States. Germany has faced mounting pressure to send Leopard 2 tanks, which is considered one of the West's best, to Ukraine. Western allies met Friday to discuss the issue, but did not reach a decision. Scholl's Social Democrat Party is traditionally skeptical of military involvements and worries sudden movements could trigger Moscow. But on Sunday, German Defense Minister Boris Pisterius said he expected a decision on the tanks soon. Other allied nations have offered to send their own tanks to Ukraine, but experts say for Ukraine's fight, those tanks don't stand up to the Leopard 2. The Kremlin spokesman said on Friday that Western countries supplying additional tanks to Ukraine would not change the course of the conflict, and that they would add to the problems of the Ukrainian people.